Anyway, let the pain continue. Resign phase after the greatest draft of all time. No JVR on this team anymore. Let's see what we got. For the goaltenders. Byzantine is an RFA. Sparks, Vevelinen's low AHL starter. Scott is at least high starter, but is a 56. Right. Uh, for the moment, let's get rid of Brandon Whitney. Let's get rid of Mark Byzantine. And let's get rid of Garrett Sparks and just piss everybody off. Vevelinen's 20, but I'm not going to sign him. His potential sucks. Scotts and Junior. So right now we have Herp sign, uh, McBride and Soros. So we'll see what's out there for other goalies. Defenseman. Riley is at least still phenomenal. Marincin or pick. Orloff we might as well hold on to. Frankie Corrado, Linus Arneson. Some of these potentials are brutal, though. They really are. Jacob Magna. Lindgren. Ronick's a low AHL top two. Stanley's medium seventh. Foot's a medium four. As is Liljegren. 55 overall. Fuck. <laughs> Oh, no. It went so poorly. Lindgren being a medium seventh. I'm going to let go of him for the moment. We're going to let go of Linus Arneson. You know, just some of these guys that... If we can find players with better potentials, we need to find them. So, even though certain people can develop, we still need to find and prioritize the better potentials. Um... So that'll leave us some opportunity in free agency. Right wing side. Uh, we'll keep Colin Smith around. Martin DeJerkals. We will not sign because he is terrible. There's Cliff Poo. Medium bottom six. Owen Tippett. <sighs> At left wing. We'll say goodbye to Colin Greening. He's just a filler type of player. Kachuk's at least a 73 now. Hagel's at a 60. Vessel Linen is a 58. It's not that bad. Oh, man. And then centers. Oof, God. Okay, Sam Carrick isn't bad. But again, filler player. I got to prioritize other people for now. Uh, Connor Brown will hold on to. Byron Frey is we can drop. Dubois is at least up to a 72. Dude, where the hell is Nolan Patrick? We traded JVR for him. That really was the worst draft of all time. That really was the worst draft of all time. Grotto, Orloff, Smith, Brown, Sutter, all back. Okay, needless to say, we're going to need some help in free agency. We're going to need some help. RFA goalie is actually, you know what, I'm not even too worried. Let's just look at everybody in general. Four goaltenders. The best on the market is Ben Bishop. Also got Ryan Miller, Steve Mason, and it drops off from there. In terms of prospects, it's Whitney, Jake Patterson, and then it continues to drop off. Shout out to Logan Thompson being there. So, I mean, Patterson would be the one to sign, but he is an RFA. Actually, you could argue about a Haru wouldn't be that bad either. Um, in terms of the goalies, like I said that we have right now. 
since Ian Scott's not signed. Saros, McBride, and Herbst. I need two NHL-level talents at this stage. Honestly, you could argue playing Saros as the backup goalie this year. So, really, it's we need an NHL-caliber starter. Because McBride and Herbst are going to be in the AHL. So, who do we want to go for? Ben Bishop might accomplish the opposite and make us too good, which uh, also isn't ideal. Oh, yeah, the, the goalie values at the time were pretty crazy. So, yeah, Scott is actually somewhat valuable. Bergvik. 22 and a 77 for Bergvik. Honestly. Frederick Bergvik. Or we could go for like a Ben Scrivens. It's true. Bring Ben Scrivesna back. Then Mark Visentine's there, who honestly wasn't that bad last year. 79 to 24. I don't think we're going to see any kind of crazy development. Now for the memes. Let's bring in Ben Scrivens again. Why not? I also need to give somebody money because obviously we're going to need to actually, you know, we're going to need a cap wheel too. So why not have Ben Scrivens as the $14 million cap wheel? Defensively, Reinhardt's an RFA. So really, it's Victor Hedman. As the big name out there at 26 years old, we have the money to go for him, certainly. In terms of prospects, mm. Runblad, 26. Gustav Borman. Shout out to Bullet for the follow, by the way. Welcome in. Um, Borman and Hedman. Right? In the high sevens are what they are, but we don't have too many roster spots. Gustav Borman. We'll go for him. Victor Hedman. There's no reason to not go for Victor Hedman. Seven years, seven and a half million. We'll see if we can outduel the Sharks for Hedman. Overall, Cassian's an RFA. Nobody else that we'd really want there. Right wing prospects. Nikita Korostelev is basically the only one worth a damn. Actually, we'll look at all forwards together. Left wing prospects. I mean, Panarin, but he's an RFA. Kunitz, Panarin, Pyarvi is also an RFA. And then the top center is Tyler Johnson. Holy shit, the Toronto Maple Lightning. Martin Hansel is also out there. RFA, Ricard Raquel. In terms of prospects, Jeremy Bracco <laughs> can bring him back. Okay. So in terms of prospects, it's going to be pretty straightforward, I would say. We're going after Tyler Johnson, too. No reason to not go after both he and Victor Hedman right now. We're also going to try to bring back Jeremy Bracco. The guy's a bit of a moron, but it'll at least be good trade value for us. Philip Schloppick can send an offer to him as well. There's nobody amazing in high nine. And then medium nine, I think the only half decent one was Nikita Korostelev. So those will be our free agent targets, a good mix of people who are good now and a lot of, uh, a lot of prospects. Let's see who we land. Obviously, signing someone like Hedman would help me get over the JVR tragedy a little bit earlier ben scrivens is back in toronto as is jeremy brocco and nikita korostelev gustav boreman schlopik
Give me a, give me one second. Okay. Okay, so we did not land Hedman. We do still have a, a chance to get Tyler Johnson, but we're going to have to overspend to get him. But fun fact, we can do that no problem. Especially because, well, hey, it's JVR's money. Yeah, no Victor Hedman for us. We did get most of, actually, all the prospects that we went after otherwise, though. We got a ways to go here, don't we? We got a ways to go here, don't we? Okay. We should be all right for now because the RFA is will still be too expensive right now. We can do the whole preseason, try to you know steal them away type of thing. Um, but for the moment, it's been... A rough couple of seconds. A rough couple of seconds indeed. We'll get through it. It's going to end in a win. It might take 30 years. Which, yes, would mean a restart. But we'll, we'll see what's up. We'll see. At least you have a pre-cooked Nolan Patrick. That's that's one way to view it. We have to double check. I keep going to the wrong damn one. Do I have any RFAs left? I do. No, I don't, actually. So 45 contracts. We do have room. Actually, you know what? Let's go look on the free agent list. I was going to say we do have room to... Sign some guys if need be. All right, there are still some big RFAs. Reinhardt, Panarin. Let me look at the um, at the prices for compensation. This would be a second round pick. Anything under four point two, and you don't have to give up a first. That's not bad. Actually, let me go back really quickly. 2.1 and 4.2. 2.1 .1 and 4.2. It would have to be one or the other, and Reinhardt would obviously be the guy. Yeah. So, Griffin Reinhardt, I would love to steal you away from Edmonton. Two years, 4.175. It would be a second round pick. We'll see if we can steal away Ryan Hart. And if we can't, we'll target our Timmy Panair. Did save an NHL four with the Wild within the first season of Thrash that Jeremy Kovalchuk to go with Gabrick. I mean, maybe they knew Kovalchuk was going to leave for the KHL. <laughs> IRL, I'd take that trade if everything still played out the way that it did. I love Dealey Kovalchuk, but he didn't stay. Came back eventually, but. All right. Unsigned players. 
There's really nobody that we absolutely have to sign out of that group, actually. At least Dubois is getting better. Let's see what happens with Griffin Reinhardt, who does accept the deal, but will Edmonton keep him? We steal away Griffin Reinhardt for a second round pick. The 23 year old, 87 overall defenseman has joined up for the price of a second round pick from the Oilers. Shrewd bit of business for us there. Uh, as Scrivens got worse. Jesus. So our goalies this year are going to be Scrivens and Soros. Out of uh, pure desperation, we'll have McBride and Herbst in the AHL. On defense, trade for the pick back to get another RFA. That is a possibility. Honestly, we might have to. Two, three, four, five, six. So we know we can send down that trio and call up Griffin Reinhardt. Yeah, one, two. God, imagine if we got Hedman, how good this defense would look. It's not that bad of a defense still. It's, it's continuing to at least be a competent enough defense. But yeah, given the fact that that draft just went as badly as it did, um, I think we might go talk to Edmonton to see if we can try to snag our Temi Panarin away for nothing. Or a second round pick and whatever it costs to get it back. We do have the Oilers first this year as well. See the value, too, of Nolan Patrick. I mean, we do have quite the prospect pool already. It's just not quite as good. I'd love to give up Jeremy Bracco just because I don't want him on my team. So, I mean, Jeremy Bracco for the pick that might land us Artemi Panarin. Um, a second and a third. Okay, maybe not a second and a third. What about a second and a fourth? There we go. Jeremy Bracco is on his way to the Oilers as we get our pick back. And uh, that'll give us the opportunity to try and steal away our Temi Panarin from Chicago. Let's see if we can do it. You're going to be in Capo in two years? We have uh, Scriven signed to $15 million, so we're fine. We're perfectly fine cap-wise. Panarin accepted. Oh, I don't want to hold the team meeting. We have landed Griffin Reinhardt and our Temi Panarin as RFAs. Is it cheesy? Yes, it is. But God damn it, when a draft is that bad, the gloves come off. And we stop worrying about anything else. We start playing dirty to get the job done. Wonderful. Let's see. That is 10 or 12 outright. So in the AHL, Panarin, Gautier is ready. Marner's about ready, too. Oh, that's right. We got to do the whole uh, back out thing. Every time. I always forget. We got to do the back out just to double check player rules. Capping and plateaued in 83. I mean, if that's true, he went from a 69 to an 84. Fuck, no one believes you. But congratulations. Let's see. Defense. Right, that's still the same. Forward-wise. Okay. So. Yeah, Goatee is now a fourth liner. Which is good. Let's call up Panarin. We know Gautier is going to be on the way up for Kasha. So again, that's 12, 13, Magen's lock. So Marner could get the call up. Might be too early to run Marner at the NHL level, but maybe not. Be better than having Jen's lock there. Is Mitch Marner ready for the big show. See a seventy-eight for twelve. Shalopic at a seventy-six. It's gonna be somebody else we can have as the healthy scratch. And Tom Bleed, just because we know he doesn't have a very good potential. Send down Shalopic. 
Sutter makes the team. Smith. Okay. Honestly. Again, we're not looking that bad. Like, we've rebounded pretty well. If we go best lines. Again, it doesn't look that bad. It does put Anton Bleed in instead of uh, Mitch Marner, which we do not want. But we can go, like, Lucas Sutter, Colin Smith, Nathan Horton. I mean, Marner's a low six. What the hell? Bozak. Who do we want to play and where? Because technically... We could go with a third line of like Lupul, Kadri, Bozak, and then just play the kids on the higher line. Marner, Matthews, Nylander, and like Panarin, Gautier, Kapanen. Honestly? That doesn't look so bad. That really doesn't look that bad. Again, I don't think it'll be playoff worthy, but in terms of getting people to develop, this could work out pretty well. Matthews does have the superior face-offs. Marner's Ma Marner, Matthews, Nylander could work. Second line, Panarin. Dude, fucking Kapanen has the best face-offs of the bunch. What the hell? We'll still go with Gautier. And Lupo Kadri Bozak. Bozak having a superior face-offs. And then Sutter, Smith, and Horton. Smith should have the best face-offs. It's close with Sutter. Technical go Horton, Smith, Sutter. That's really not that bad. If we can get Marner to develop despite that horrible potential. Not bad. Why is Marner up there? Because again, there was dynamic potential at the time. Like he kind of similar to what we have now. He can get better. 20 years old, 80 overall. It's worth a chance playing him up that high. Riley and Reinhardt. No defense allowed. Marincin, Orloff, Orpik, and Shen. So it does scratch Corrado. Which, to be honest, I'd probably want to scratch Brooks Orpik, but it's okay. Griffin Reinhardt there. And then our goalies are Ben Scrivens and UC Saros. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. We're going to have some things to change around, as always, including best lines in the AHL. But there's a lot of promising talent here, too. Especially on defense. Nielsen's still high elite, which is great. And then we got Nick McBride and Liam Herbst. I think we rebounded really well from how we felt about 15 minutes ago when that draft was absolute trash. We traded Joffrey Lupul. I think we've rebounded pretty damn well here.